everyone. Here we are, Drive Safe Dave, back here on BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. And I have Grace Sharkey here, Sirius XM host of Freight Waves Drive Time. How are you doing, Grace? I'm doing good. Uh, happy to be here. It's funny, when I first got on, I saw Dale and I said, oh, Rick, uh, your hair's grown. <laughs> you threw me off for a second. So it's, a, <laughs> it's a whole different person there. So It is. A, it's a whole different, different personality, different deal. But, you know, I, I don't believe I was here. I, I know you've been on here before, and I don't believe I was here the last time. I think it was Sir Rick that did the interview. Um, and, yeah. you know, that now, now, the, now the A team is up, Grace. So... We're in the game, yeah. so now you get that. Now you get first string here doing interviews. Um, you live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, right? I just recently moved from Grand Rapids to Lansing, so a little bit farther down from here to here. <laughs> you're, you're definitely from Michigan. <laughs> showing the showing the hand. Hey, you know, I I'll tell you what. I I love Michigan. I I Charlevoix and. Um, Mackinac and you, you know, uh, I mean, you name it up there. Absolutely gorgeous in the summertime. It, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and probably through the next couple of weeks, the trees are pretty gorgeous up there. Oh yeah. Give it, uh, a couple more weeks and there'll be snow and you won't want to be up there at all. No, I <laughs> I mean, yeah, they'll close Mackinac. I mean, just yeah, shut it off. Yeah. yeah, Mackinac Island, no more ferries. Um, yeah. Uh, look, I'll tell you what, um, Grace, what, what have you... What is going on since the last time we talked? Well, let me introduce you first. Obviously, everyone knows who you are. Everyone knows what you do. But I do know that you do a uh, a show over there. It's called Great uh, Great Quarter Gals, right? Over there at Freight. Yeah. And so just kind of tell us what it is, what it is you do, and and what it is what it's about. Yeah, so I uh, have I have two podcasts here. I do a retail show, but I, one of my favorite shows that I do is with Kaylee Nix. Uh, the show actually used it's been on Freightways for some time now. It used to be called Great Quarter Guys, uh, and uh, coming off of a lot of what you hear from earnings calls, it's been a Great Quarter Guys, and we decided uh, to rebrand the show. So Kaylee and I took it over uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, and we rebranded as Great Quarter Gals, and our focus was to not only showcase females in this industry that have a huge impact on our supply chains and even those who might have a smaller impact but have uh, he, their jobs have big repercussions at the companies they work at um, and also to teach women more about finance as well it's you know something that I think our generation my generation as a whole is just starting to get a hold of when you talk about the retail traders and things of that nature, right? Uh, Robin Hood traders, all that jazz. Uh, but, you know, growing up, the more women I meet, I realize that there's this huge financial gap. And we want to make sure that the women in this industry who, honestly, a lot of them are in finance roles, are having a, a chance to uh, have their voice heard and also learn a little bit more about why certain companies are doing so well in this industry, why some aren't, and give just an overall financial lesson to not even just the female uh, listener or viewer, but even uh, males as well. So it's it's been a lot of fun, and uh, we've got some really great guests. We just, last week, our, our guest, well, this week, actually, we had Robin Hutchinson on. So uh, we're starting to get some really big players in the industry, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah that, I believe she's FMCSA chief, right? I mean, yes. you're talking, you're talking big wig, right? Uh, you you start bringing in uh, Miss Hutchison. When you get Booty Jag in there, let me know, Grace. I'll be I'll be definitely in the wings, wanting to talk to uh, the Secretary of Transportation. Yeah. I, yeah, that I, one, and I think uh, I'm, we're working on even like uh, Granholm, right? As energy, clearly you guys just started the show off of how bad that situation is starting to get. So even if we could get someone like her, past governor of Michigan, right? Uh, that would be cool as well. Yeah, I mean, I look. There, there's so many. There's so many things that impact the industry and impact what whatever is going on in the world. I mean, in, in energy and and believe it or not. These wars, these restrictions on trade, these sanctions that take part, they all play a genuine impact on trade across the country. We're no longer isolationists. It's, I mean, this is a world market. We deal in a world market. And I, and I know that, that trucking here is the like the last mile or the final mile or the beginning or whatever. But really, that trade, that world market impacts all of these industries, all of this together. A hundred percent. And that's... You know, I think why we love doing the show so much is because people need to 
to understand that uh, these different companies and how they're set up financially to, especially the public ones, right, that are, are there to not only make more money, but make more money for their shareholders and what impact that has on at the supply chain at the end of the day too. Yeah, and we could, we could talk. I, I tell you what, this is a show, honestly, about ladies who launch. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I know we could sit here and talk business. We could talk trucking. We could talk the impact. And we could talk quarterfinals. I really want to focus a little bit, Grace, on you and, and what you were mentioning earlier because I think it's important. I, I think it's, what, it's something that need, we need to discuss we need to continue to have the conversations and we need to continue to have examples. But but what got you doing this? I mean, let, let's just say, what draw, drew you to do this? Yeah, so uh, I guess, uh, do you mean in, in entering this industry or uh, are you talking like more of like the Sirius XM show? Or all I'll, take, whole... I'll take a little of both, right, Grace? Cool. Because, yeah. I mean, let's just talk a little bit about what drew you in being a lady because I'll tell you something. I've actually been, I mean, you may not can tell how old I am, but I've actually been in the industry quite some time and it has adapted, changed and come full circle because when I came in the industry, we, you know, we did a lot of spitting and cussing and there weren't a lot of, I mean, there weren't a lot of ladies uh, in the industry, um, both on the top end and on the bottom end. I mean, and, and. I really think it's a great story. Any story that tells of a woman coming in here and why you got here. Yeah, so uh, really odd start, honestly. Uh, in college, I uh, raised funds for Michigan State. That was my job that paid my way through school. So I would go to classes during the day and then about five o'clock in the afternoon, I was one of those annoying girls that would call alumni at dinner time and ask you for some extra dollars. And I love the job, and it's a lot of the skills in that job um, transfer over into brokerage uh, and a lot of the work they do in a brokerage very easily. So uh, every year we would have companies like Coyote, C.H. Robinson, a lot of the Chicago big guys would come in and, and recruit out of uh, our offices. And uh, at the time when I graduated, not only I had a few friends that had worked at a couple of these companies for a few years, and we're kind of like being burned and churned through it. So I'm like, okay, well, I like this industry. I like what I hear about it, but I want to start with a company that's maybe growing, give me, give myself a, a better opportunity towards management. Uh, and at the time, my father was having some health issues too. So I didn't want to go too far away from home. And I ended up meeting the owner of uh, Fifth Wheel Freight, a logistics company out of Lansing. They're now up in Grand Rapids. And I love the opportunity for growth. And I started on there and uh, very rapidly, we started adding sales reps. Um, and by the time I left there about be two years ago in a couple of weeks, uh, we were at about $80 million in business. So uh, a group of, of college friends as well, we were all part of that. And um, it's, I love this industry. And I think why females in particular are very good at this industry uh, is that we're natural problem solvers. Uh, there's a quote out there from, I think, Reese Witherspoon, where she complains about a lot of the writing in Hollywood that makes women, like, if there's ever a problem, like, women hysterically are like, what do we do next, you know? And, like, have you ever met a woman who, like, in a time of crisis has no idea what to do next? Like, never. It's usually, uh, here's 12 things that we could do next. It's, it's Rarely do you see the female in the room hovering in the corner having no idea how to fix the problem. It's honest, it's usually the opposite, like too many solutions to, to what we need to do. Uh, and so I think that's what really attracted me to it was like every day is different. Every day is a different problem. Uh, and every every circumstance, whether you think it's the same problem, uh, is a little bit different. It takes that time and attention and empathy to, to problem solve. So I think those skills is what really attracted me to the industry. And then slowly with the business growing, I got to almost get like a master's in business learning how to grow a brokerage and how to reach different, different uh, levels of growth and, and strategize different ways of growing your, your business. I mean, there's different ways that you're going to grow a mom and pop brokerage compared to if you're trying to compete with the big guys. So uh, a lot of the, that's what really got me into this. And, and coming from that uh, company, you know, a lot of it was like research and, and diving into the industry and the history of the industry and, and how people have grown someone like C.H. Robinson over the last hundred or so years. 
Um, and that's what led me to all the wealth of knowledge that when I ended up leaving there, I, I wanted to go into consulting, but I actually ended up uh, driving right into Freightways Opportunities. And then about uh, last March, so I haven't even been on it for a year yet, uh, the opportunity came with, with Sirius XM to do a daily show. We had a Saturday show for a while with Juner, which I used to call into all the time. Uh, I used to call in because I'd go up to uh, Charlevoix and, and drive up to those places for a couple hours and, and hike and stuff. So it was like, uh, it's, it's funny, full circle now, uh, taking over the show, uh, producing it, getting all of the contributors for it, booking all the guests. Um, it's a whole nother logistical challenge in a way as well that I just absolutely enjoy. So that's what got me here. And, and like most, once you get into it, this industry, it's, it's so hard to leave. I think that problem solving aspect is what's honestly kept me here and, and learning every single day how new technology is helping with that, how carriers are dealing with different situations. And I just like listening and talking to new people. And I think that's what really helps me uh, enjoy my time on the serious show too, is talking with the drivers and see, you know, maybe I have an opinion, but you're doing it every day. What's your opinion on this certain situation? You know, Grayson, and, and as we, as we hear some of the challenges that, that you faced and as you came across and, and started to fall in love with the industry, I, I tell you, once you get this into your system, it's hard to get it out. Um, this industry, I, don't, I, I mean, I, I, it's something you live, eat and breathe and, and it, and it's addictive. And, and I can yeah. tell you that full honestly. Um, what is it, you and Kaylee are obviously doing some amazing things in your conversations about the industry. And, and But I, I tell you what that I'm interested in and what I'm trying to get. Uh, how are women, now that you speak to them and you talk about them and you talk about, you kind of get a bigger picture, a broader picture. How are they still facing barriers here in this industry? So I think... Uh, one thing in particular is the average uh, population of women at, at individual locations across the supply chain, right? Uh, I think in a lot of back office work, you'll see more women than you see men. So that makes it a little bit more comfortable. But I think the biggest problem is the amount of women in every sector, right? Like if you get us all together at the Women in Trucking Conference, right? That's different. There's a ton of us there. We've, it's just such a happy community. But when you separate us into these different boxes and these different companies, it gets it does get lonely. Uh, for a while, I I was the only woman in this sweet C suite uh, type of role, and uh, it it does get intimidating because a lot of times you don't have someone to talk to or to bounce ideas off of or thoughts. If you think, you know, maybe you're being spoken over or you're being treated unfairly that kind of just settles in the back of your mind and you live with it and you deal with it and you keep on moving. Uh, but I think what happens is that when we all come together, we start to realize, oh, all of us are having these problems. And I think having more women in your office and trying to actively recruit more women uh, helps a lot with women feeling more comfortable in this industry. Uh, there's a, a Charlie uh, Safro is a, a recruiter in this industry that I love. I think you guys have had her on the show. Uh, yeah, and she uh, sees this quote that we always talk about, if you want to recruit women, you have to learn how to retain women. And so I think it's making sure that your culture is set up that if a woman does have an opinion that she's able to speak that truth and, and be heard, uh, but also that the culture and the business is, is interested in her needs outside of outside of work. Uh, too often do I see, when we talk about culture and women, too often do I see that focused on the family aspect, right? Like, oh, we want to make sure you have a work-life balance so that you can take care of your family. Well, there's a big percentage and a growing percentage of women that, one, don't want to have a family, but still care about those things, and two, can't have a family. And so I, I just think that where there's a lot more growing that needs to be done. And when we talk about building a culture for women, uh, it's a lot bigger than just uh, making sure that uh, time home with our kids or our newborns is, is there. Uh, it goes much past that. And I think, uh, uh, well, ask the women in your office. They're going to have the best ideas that are going to bring that to fruition. And it's going to be uncomfortable. I think a lot of times, like people start enacting some of these cult different cultures, and it's it might not feel comfortable for the the majority, which is the males in the office. 
but the, out of uncomfortableness is change, right? I mean, that's the same thing for all of us as individuals. So just uh, push forward in a lot of these activities. Try to focus on where women want to be in their careers down the line than just their families. And I think you'll start to see not only do you retain women more, but you start to recruit them a lot more as well. I, that's that's great advice, and 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 I think that, and I'm just gonna as an observation, I've been been doing this a while. I, I truly believe that the young, talented people, both men and women that that come in college, really have no idea about the different areas and po- and opportunities that that logistics and this industry has. I mean, Grace, let's yeah. be honest, there it, we do a horrible job in educating folks about what we do for a living, right? I mean, we do, yeah. we, 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 and I don't mean this you, I just mean me, you're doing a great job talking, but but really haven't been in this industry a while, we suck at it. I mean, we're just yeah. not really good at getting the word out of what, what happens and how it happens and how wonderful it is here. We just get so in it, we don't have a chance to share it. And I think a lot of what you're talking about is educating whether man, woman, but, but women in the future with their talent and their brains and their abilities, we want them here, right? We yes. we yes. need them here. If we're going to make this better, if we're going to make this, you know, better for every single person, we need those people of talent. How do we how do we reach them? Uh, well, first thing I do want to say is I 100% agree with you. I think that the biggest cultural change I've noticed since I've started in this industry, I mean, well, I'll say 2013, 12 ish, is that men are openly want to bring more women on because I think they see the value in bringing that culture and and having that diversity in the office. So I completely agree. One thing in particular, I think it really needs to start with what a lot of times driving schools do as well is like get to these people in high school, even earlier if possible. Women in trucking, and they do an excellent uh, Girl Scouts uh, opportunity where they not only teach girl, women, or girls in the Scouts about trucking, but also maritime and uh, teach them about uh, air freight as well. Like there's, like you said, so many different opportunities, I think, for women to be a part of this industry that they don't realize. They might think, oh, transportation, like I don't want to drive a truck. Well, do you want to drive a plane, right? Like, or fly a plane, so um, drive a plane. <laughs> but still, it's, uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I think getting to them as early as possible and not at senior year of college when they've already invested so much time in maybe a different type of degree or different future. Uh, but getting there as soon as possible, whether it's like high school like uh, or, or um, some type of, of troops or organization, I think that's the biggest thing is, is teaching them sooner rather than later about the various opportunities that they can have. And because, you know, there's different roles and claims. There's different uh, packaging, right? If you love packaging, that's where you can help out. There's so many different areas in the supply chain that we need help in. Robotics, that's a huge one too. Data analysts, I think that's a huge one. I see women growing in as well. So yeah, we just need to get to them sooner and we need to teach them the opportunity because there's there's money in this industry too. And I think yeah, that's they- another part of it. It's like, do you want to be a data analyst? Well, guess what? Uh, here's an industry that just found out about data about five years ago. So <laughs> let's see how you can help it. <laughs> and now we're over. Now we're overwhelmed with data. Um, I, yeah. I, 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 let me just ask you real quick. Look, we're we're going to see you out at the uh, Women in Trucking Acce- Acceleration Expo in Dallas here pretty soon. Um, I know yeah. it's coming up soon. We know we're going to see you out there. We're gonna we we've got a booth set up out there. We're going to be seeing all of you. Let me ask you. We're excited about being out there. We know what it means to the industry. What does it mean to you to go to something like the uh, the uh, Women in Trucking Expo? I the first time I ever went to it was about two or three years ago, and I just left with such an overwhelming feeling of um, uh, togetherness. And also, like I said, you you leave an office of mostly a men, and you go to these situations and. There's a lot of fun networking and, and icebreakers and things like that where you get to talk about the problems you face in the, your individual roles. And everyone has the same stories. And so you leave there with just like really great mentors and people that you can lean on to help guide you through those events. I can't tell you how many amazing trucking uh, owners and fleet owners that I met that are women uh, at that uh, event. You just, 
uh, not only are going to get to see the best of the best clearly in the industry when it comes to technology and, and uh, companies that are part of it, uh, but you're going to leave there having an idea of probably what you want to do in your career over time, the, the women that you need to talk to when you're having a rough day, uh, and just a really great, strong uh uh, feeling of resilience, I think, is like the best way to explain it. So I love that event, and I'm happy to be there. I'm excited to, to link up with you guys while Kaylee and I are there, too. And uh, who doesn't love Dallas in November, right? That's all the weather we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous here. Um, you know, it, it's I think it was 75 today. I don't I don't know how that I mean, it's just it was just miserable um, outside at 75. I, I'll tell you what, Grace, look, we look forward to seeing you out there. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. You go to these events. We're going to go again to the women in trucking. You're inspired by everyone there. Um, there is, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, there's somebody to look up to there uh, because yeah. there are genuine heroes in the industry making a difference. And, you know, it's exciting to know that they're women there. It's exciting to know what they're bringing and, and how we're changing the industry for the better. Man, I look forward to seeing you there, Grace. Hey, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for coming in. If you will, do me a favor. I ask everybody before they leave if they'll state their name and who they're with and that you're watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Can you do that for me, Grace? Yes, sir. My name is Grace Sharkey. I'm with Freight Waves, and you're watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. <laughs>